Good morning. Um, as you said, my name is David Thomas. I uh, am one of the co-owners of Vortex Light Brewing. There are four owners. Uh, there's myself, uh, James Allen, uh, Mark Spaulding, and Jason Snyder. Um, we, well, you know what, we'll just start from the beginning. How about that? So, um, this is on. Uh, there, there it is. All right. So, one of the favorite sayings for brewers is uh, uh, necessity is the mother of all invention. So, when you're brewing or you're creating your little homebrew or doing what you're doing, the necessity drives you to make it a little bit better or make something that's going to help you make your beer better. Uh, so, back in 1999, Mark had found this beer, uh, everyone heard of Leinenkugel. So they had a honey wheat in 1999, but it was seasonal and you can only get it for like one month in, in the year. Uh, he fell in love with the beer, uh, but couldn't get it no more. So by necessity, he had to learn, he had to go learn how to make beer. If you know Mark, Mark's very intelligent. He, he's very, he's very stubborn and he will push forward till he gets where he, till he gets where he wants to be. He, uh, so he learned how to make a uh, honey wheat, which is what we still make today. It's uh, what we now call Bountiful Harvest. It's a beer uh, that we've had on our task for a long time. Uh, and it's uh, one, of, one of the top sellers we have at our brewery. So, um, Couple years later, Mark and I have been friends. So a little backstory: Mark and I have been friends since we were 13 and 14 years old. So we've been friends long before we started brewing. Uh, uh, I had had craft beer once before, and I thought it was the worst thing I've ever had in my life. Uh, and when he told me he was making homebrew, I was like, "Oh no, man! It's like, like how am I going to tell my friend I can't drink your crappy beer?" <laughs> so went over to Mark's house and. He had some really good beers, some I liked, some I didn't like. I hated IPAs in the beginning, couldn't drink them. I thought they were terrible. Uh, I, you know, a few months later, I learned to love them. Uh, but he taught me, uh, I say taught, he basically, he, I was, uh, I just ran around, did all the errands and cleaned all the kegs and I just drank beer while I was there. So, <laughs> but in the process, I learned how to make beer. Uh, and then he taught Jimmy how to make beer, and he taught our, uh, our old partner, Spencer, uh, how to make beer. So we all got together and started making beer and home brewing. We loved craft beer. Craft beer in Oklahoma was growing. It was getting, the, the market was getting bigger. You could start to see more craft beer here in uh, Punk City, uh, which was really exciting. For a time, I, I had moved away, and you know, you're thinking, we talk about building a brewery, you think you've got to have this big space with lots of big tanks, big shiny tanks, and that's how a brewery was supposed to work, right? And I moved to Pennsylvania for about a year and a half. And while I was up there, I got to witness all these small communities that had their own breweries, like small, smaller, much smaller than Ponca's. And they had their own breweries. There was one brewery that wasn't even in a community. It was in between two communities that were super small, like probably smaller than Newkirk. Both communities were, by size were much smaller. And this brewery just thrived out there in the middle of nowhere between these two towns. So it led, when I came back here, I thought, you know, this is doable here in Ponk City. So in 2016, the Oklahoma laws changed. Before that, you could have a brewery, but you couldn't sell your full strength beer. You could only sell three, two beer at the time. And to, in August 2016, that law changed and allowed brewers and breweries to sell out of their own tap room full, their full strength beer up to 16%. Um, so um, that was the turning point where we said, all right, this is something we can do. So we signed a lease with, uh, we were talking about George Schwartz this morning, we signed a lease at our current location at 220 East Central. Uh, we signed a lease. Uh, on July 1st, and we, t we took over the building and he allowed us to do what we need to do to build a brewery. So uh, it took us about 18 months to create that brewery, a tap room. Uh, 
doing a business is already has difficulties and, and things you have to jump over. Uh, building a business where an alcohol is involved, those just double and triple. So, uh, in, on November 4th, 2017, we opened the doors and, and uh, you guys flooded the whole place and we uh, luckily fire marshal didn't come by and everything was good. But we had a great turnout and we've had, uh, we've had people come in and support us ever since. And it's been a great, great, seriously, this whole time, uh, we've been doing this almost four and a half years and, it's, uh, and every, every week is surprising. You know, we're just a little more surprised that people still like us. So uh, I think we must be doing something right. Uh, we have our outdoor seating area. Um, we had one in the first year. One we in the first year we won. We put the outdoor seating area. We won uh, uh, PC Main Street of the year in the first year. Uh, in June 2018, we put our first tap handle at the Chili's restaurant here in Ponk City. Uh, that was the first one that we went to. Uh, we, um, we had at that point, we were still brewing on a barrel and a half system. A uh, barrel and a half is 48 gallons of beer. We upscaled that in our first two years to a three barrel system, which is 93 gallons of beer. Um, and we had to do that because we started distributing a little bit in Ponk City. So you could find you found us at Chili's, at uh, Chili's at the time, right before the pandemic, it was Chili's, Rib Crib, uh, the Country Club, and the, the Cigar Lounge. COVID hit. Uh, we're still now at Chili's. We're at the Country Club. Uh, we're at Rusty Barrel. We're at Cigar Lounge. We're at now we're at out at Bremen at the. Uh, the, the Rock and Brew Casino. We have four taps out there and we're at back to size. So that's where we're at today. Um, in May of 2021, we had a partner swap. We brought Jason Snyder in as one of the new partners. Uh, Jason brings a lot of uh, homebrew knowledge and he's learning and he loves, he loves beer, loves homebrew, loves craft beer. So. He brings a lot of passion to the table and he allows us to, you know, get a little bit better. He's kind of the master of our, our hazy IPAs. Um, we joined force, the PCA joined forces with us this past year, which we're very proud of. Uh, it's kind of one of those things where you think it kind of legitimizes us a little bit. It's like someone believed in us and, and was able to partner up with us to do something. So it's allowed us to take what we are currently doing and, and and make it bigger and go a little bit bigger than we're currently doing right now. Um, we, we work with locally, local business, as many local business as we can. We work with like CME to get our tap handles uh, and they actually do our grates for our floors. Local contractors, uh, we're working with uh, A plus or Oklahoma labels to print our can labels for us when we start producing cans. Uh, we, uh, we work with, uh, with local downtown businesses. Uh, we, we started a pub crawl back in, uh, on Halloween of 2021. Uh, we work with, uh, Astoria, the Axel, uh, Grand Cigar Lounge, and we work with them and do a pub crawl. And we utilize that opportunity to, to do that, to make a fun event while at the same time, uh, taking that opportunity to, um, allow people to donate to a local cause or nonprofit here in town that uh, those donations will be divvied up. This month we're doing the St. Patty's Day pub crawl and those will, will be doing a, uh, for the Humane Society. So donation to get, so you get a card that had, you get stamped that has our, each of our logos on the card. And to, to get the card, you bring in a donation for the Humane Society that could be financial or, or, or a need they have, blankets, things like that. And then you'll get the card and you can take that around and get that stamped. And at the end of it, you turn it in and then we will uh, have a drawing in a, two, a couple days later, we'll have a drawing. And someone, we have about $800 in uh, 
gift cards that we will hand out, but we'll divide them up by, by four places. So there'll be four winners to get $200 worth of gift cards or more. We, we always take sponsorships. If people want to add to the, to the total, that's great. Um, so we also do, like I said, the Humane Society. We, uh, we bring the Humane Society up and we do meet and greets with, with the pets. And we've seen I, probably nine, 10 adoptions at the brewery. So, you know, add a little alcohol, people take cute puppies home. So it works out great for everybody. Uh, and we do so, several fundraiser taps. Uh, that's where we'll take a tap, we'll make a beer. Uh, we'll take the cells, a portion of the cells from that tap or 100% of the cells of the, tap, of the cells of that tap and donate that to a charity, a fundraiser, a thing of that nature. So see those, you can't, if you can't see that very well, these are our bright, beautiful new tanks we have in our brewery right now. So uh, they are giants. So this year, uh, this will be our second upgrade to the brewery and tap room. Uh, we'll be tripling the size of our current brewery. We're three barrels, we're moving to nine barrels now. Uh, we have 12 taps, in our, we started with six taps when we first opened up. We went to 10 after COVID, now we're at 12. Uh, and, and if you haven't checked out the fire pit on the front pat on the patio, it's amazing. It's great. We also got a canning line coming, or we have actually we have it. We haven't opened it yet. So, uh, so with the brewery upgrade, uh, we'll start dis distribution outside of Ponca City, K County. Uh, so this is where where it says taking VAB and PC to the masses. Where you know where we want to take. If you if you ever seen any of our merchandise or bought any of our merchandise, you always notice that it says it's, it will have our logo on it, but on there it says Ponca City, Oklahoma. Always, uh, we always make sure that when you see our logo, you associate Ponca City with that. Uh, we expect full production to start in April uh, this year. Uh, in reality, we 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 brewed. Uh, we triple batch brewed yesterday. We spent like 15 hours brewing three batches of beer that we put in the big fermenter. So we're going to maybe see some canning at the end of March. Maybe see some cans out there in the, in the stores. And this is our first beer that we're doing. So we talked about the beer that first started it. Well, this is it. Balance of Harvest is the first beer that was Mark brewed, learned to brew. And this is what we keep in, we have in our tap room all the time. And this is what we're making. So we had a local artist. Uh, Clint, Clint Rao, who, who created that for us, and we think it's amazing. Uh, if you can't really see it really well, but if you, if you, if you hone in on the, the light purple, those, you, you have to really look into it. They're honeycombs, the whole thing. So, so what can you do to help us? You can follow us on social media. Uh, share our post. You know, talk about us. Um, and that's any business. I mean, not just ours, but any business. Um, if you wear, if you wear our wares, drink from our glasses. You know, cans or glassware. Post it. You know, tag us in those posts. And uh, most importantly, visit the tack room, see the new brewery. We love people. So, you know, even if you don't drink beer, we don't. I mean, we have people come in. They drink soda, or they'll just come in. They don't. You know, they don't like beer. We have we have soda offers. So, we're not. You know. We love, we love people come in, but we love for you to come see the new tap, see the new equipment. So, and that is all I have. It's over. Question? Yes. What else do you sell there besides beer, Dave? We have wine, too. Cider. Oh, yeah, we do have cider. Yeah, we, we have cider. Yes, actually, that's, 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 that's a good point. We do have cider. So we can legally make cider, uh, and we have, uh, but we have some friends out of Oklahoma City uh, who has a cider company that we bought some cider from and now have in our tap room as well. It's called OKC Cider. And um, one of the owners of that company, uh, Luke, is actually uh, went to school in Blackwell and in Tonkawal before he moved to Oklahoma City. He went to the NOC in Tonkawal, and he went to junior high and high school in Blackwell. So he has connections here to the local area. Uh, so we felt that it was a good, it was a, 
they make great ciders anyway, but it was a good it was a good point to have them here, you know, since you know he's from the area. Also, they want you to do some group parties there and things like that. We well, yeah, we well, yeah, we I mean if you if we have people come in, uh we try not to shut it down during days that we're open. Uh I I feel like um I don't want to take away from the people who come there and say we're just going to close it down for for a private party. So we try to keep our private parties on days where it would not open. Um, so, but we allow people to come in if they want to have a gathering of people. Absolutely, yeah, we we will you know set aside. We had the PYE there last week, which just filled the place up. I was like, I was looking. I someone sent me a picture. I said that's a lot of people. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah. So yeah, we're 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 always, you know, we're thankful to have that many people have interest in, in coming down and, and using the space. So hopefully we're making good enough beer that they want to come down there. Yes. Thank you. Yes, sir, Are you canning the beer yourself? We will be. We, we bought a canning line, a big one. <laughs> so, so it's not that big, but it's, 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 it's supposed to pump out like 18 cans a minute. So, so and we, we, just, we just bought a labeler. So that labeler is supposed to do, you know, 20 cans a minute. So hopefully the label, we get the labeler keeping up with uh, everything else. So. And we got, we got, like I said, we'll be working with Chad from A plus on the, on the labels. So he's right down the street and he's, he's actually started kicking it off in uh, different areas around Oklahoma, selling a lot of his can labels all over Oklahoma. So that's great. Yes, ma'am. What was your biggest um, challenge pre-COVID? Well, you know, we, we actually were very, we were pretty blessed. We didn't have uh, any debt at the time when COVID hit, so we were pretty lucky. Uh, and but we and we were able to sell Crowler cans, which man, believe me, that that was one of the moments I knew about. I felt the uh, community support because it was it was so many people showed up to get Crowler cans, and we were only open at the time nine hours a week. To sell those Crowler cans, and we were filling 300, 350 Crowler cans a week to try to keep up with that. So the challenge was we wanted to open the tap room. We, we wanted people to be there and hang out with people. We love we love doing that, and that was you know that was the biggest challenge for us. Just could not we could not do that. So um, you know, and you, you know, and also now keeping you're trying to keep people from getting sick. You know, hopefully people you. Know, we, we spread out the tables, you know, we sanitize, we do what we do, but, you know, just make sure that people weren't catching COVID at Vortex. We didn't want them catching COVID anywhere, but definitely at Vortex, not at Vortex, so. Did you have any supply chain issues? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I still do. That's, uh, that's all the time. So, yeah, prices uh, of goods are going up, are, are skyrocketing. Uh, uh, so, but you know, you, you, what we try to do is if this goes up, where can we adjust to, to save on that cost increase? It can, can we adjust to it? Is there another space we can adjust that to? Can we shift it off to another area? You know, and you just have to, you know, where do you, you just kind of balance it out. And that's what we're trying to do. We try to balance it up. We want to keep our prices where, where they're at. I, we can't promise they'll stay there, but we, we want to, Try to we want to try as much as possible and take make sure we're going covering every basis before we make the price increase. So, um, yeah, I mean we're still we're we're five months in and we're still waiting to get our kettles, so for our brew kettles. But they are shipping tomorrow or Friday, so awesome. I, I mean, word of mouth for sure. I mean, just talking about it, 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 it seems 
it's silly to me. It's crazy to me. Uh, we'll go set up at Oktoberfest. Like we set up this past year, and we've had people say, "Oh, where are you at?" We'll say, "We're on Second and or we're in Third and Third and Central," and they'll say, "Here in Ponca." Yeah, and I'll say, "You from Ponca?" They'll go, "Yeah." How? How? <laughs> like, so I, I just I, like so so you know, you know, it's a lot of people still don't know we exist, and that and that's that's a real thing. I mean, it's just uh, you know, and that's just here in that's just here in Ponca City. Uh, outside of Ponca City, Blackwell, Conkwall, they don't know. A lot of them don't know about us. So, talking about it, posting it, like I said, posting it, sharing these things out, and people will start asking questions. Where where is this at? What what is this? You know. So that's. She was like, get fed all my information, so. Gabby, you got anything? <laughs> What's your uh, timeline for like the first batch to be canned? Mm. So, I don't know. I, I seriously, I've never stuck a beer in a giant stainless steel fermenter before in my life. And that happened yesterday. So I don't know what, I went in today and the, the bucket was, the, you know, the bucket with the you know, sanitizer was bubbling away, just going crazy. So I was fermenting like, like it's supposed to be. I, I don't know if it's quicker. I don't know if it's faster. I know there's a lot of positives uh, that we get to now, but I don't, I will say the end of March, April is when we'll can it. Probably so. We'll say. I honestly have no idea. I, I'm, I, it's all guesswork for me right now. So I knew what I could, I knew what I could do in the old fermenters, but I don't know what I can do now. So it's like uh, starting over again. Is it? <laughs>